Hi, welcome to tutorial 5 for SARS. This tutorial deals with permit applications for objects or sites. In the main, we get more permit applications for sites. Uh, any building older than 60 years, for instance, uh, is provisionally protected, or, um, or not provisionally protected, but has a general protection under Section 34 of the National Heritage Resources Act. Um, but we get many applications for uh, um, archaeological sites under Section 35, um, and uh, monuments, Section 37, and burial grounds and graves under Section 36. Um, heritage objects, permit applications um, also apply for declared heritage collections, national heritage collections, uh, and there are also various provisions for objects older than certain ages, um, and then a process go, uh, is undertaken to establish the significance of those objects before they are allowed to be exported out of the country, or if they are destroyed, for instance, um, the permit applications uh, take place. So let's deal with a simple case where we'd like to apply for um, alterations to a building and then we'll look at the various categories within the site. So the first thing you do is log into SARS as an applicant and go to the SARS link and you'll notice the first thing you need to do is create your site. We are migrating uh, thousands of sites into SARS and in an ideal world all the sites would already be in the inventory. However, in reality many of the municipalities, the buildings older than 60 years haven't been entered into SARS yet and you would pr most likely have to create your site before applying for a permit on that site. If you already know that your site is in the system, many of our archaeological sites already are, then you simply use the site reference number for your uh, permit application. So let's begin with creating the site. So you go to create site and it pops up a very simple screen for the site. The geographical information, the site categories, the property ownership information um, and the site action tags are the main features of, of the site but there are many more fields in the site recording um, which we'll look at in a little bit. The basic idea be, be by se separating out the, the geographical um, sites from the site recordings is that in many instances we'll record very, some basic information about uh, a site uh, from the imports and we don't actually have much more information other than it's a point in the landscape and it's a, a artifact scatter for instance um, and then down the line a fuller recording might take place and we also would like to capture site recordings over time as a one-to-many relationship so that you can track how different ideas have changed about the recordings of sites. For buildings this is not too relevant. Uh, a primary site recording would normally suffice uh, rather than having lots and lots of different site recordings. Let's look at the basic information. Let's create a test site. So let's call this one test 6. You'll notice the uniqueness module kicks in on the right hand side and a related content. So it finds all records that are sites that have test in the site name. So I know that this is a unique number. It doesn't really matter very much uh, what you use as a site reference other than that, other than that uh, the GPS coordinates um, will take you on into seeing whether you're creating a duplicate site. Um, so that's the, the purpose of the uniqueness module, just to warn you about similar codes that are already in the system. So people doing site recordings in batches uh, will use this um, to find the next number in their sequence. Let's give it a full name. This is often the address. Uh, so for a building application you might use something like, well, our offices. Um, but uh, you know, uh, the full site name might be the name of the farm. Um, the various uh, things would apply, um, depending on what your type of site is. Uh, so I'm going to pick a building for this one, and it's just going to be an ordinary building. Uh, 
that's older than 60 years and I'm going to give it its address uh, now the um, the quick geocode location name what that is is the Google database of points of interest um, like the castle of Good Hope in Cape Town many people have mapped various places already and that, that would be the common name that people would look for um, this doesn't always work, it doesn't always geocode automatically based on the address you've entered in there um, but it's useful for places in, in urban areas um, and you might get lucky that Google's geocoded database will find and map the point for you I have in the main um, just simply enter the information as normal into the other fields and for farms you, you probably won't even use any of these fields except the province um, and then the suburb would be uh, Cape Town CBD so let's just leave that out and then just put Cape Town and Western Cape postal code okay country South Africa right when you're mapping a site you can also use the the GMAP module um, to map the point this only takes a point rather than a polygon as you saw in the cases you can map uh, uh, shapes and lines as well so in this one is just a point so I'm in fact going to put in Harrington Street Cape Town and hopefully that finds a match yep there we go uh, let's zoom in a little bit the GMAP module works a little bit differently to the open layers you can't draw square boxes and zoom in um, the layers coming off our geo server you'll notice aren't available um, this is very much just a uh, a quick finder tool in order to as a means to an end to map the site you can also enter the lat long directly um, but the the point that uh, you see that um, has worked don't forget to click on the map if you use the address finder um, because you need to have a, a latitude longitude appear the um, property these are quite important um, we are linking owners to properties so that we can track the the owners to their um, heritage sites on their land and the various other things that apply for owners down the line in Saurus um, and this is especially important on farms where we'd like to grant owners the full access to all the archaeological sites mapped on their properties in many cases the owners won't already be members of Saurus um, and so you'll enter the information and later will link their user accounts to their, their names on Saurus. Um, I'm going to see if Harrington Street is here. Let's just click search and I'm going to put Street Harrington. Hopefully it's on here. No, no unfortunately not. Um, let's just use an existing one. I don't want to really go through the whole process of entering a new property. So let's just take uh, let's a farm I know. Um, okay, and then this in turn is linked to an owner. So you'll notice in the pop up for the property uh, that property has an owner. You can link that to an owner. Um, so let's just move on from that. You can link, of course, the site to multiple properties, but in general, that is not not the case. If the site, typically in urban areas, is the whole earth, then tick property is site. In fact, in this case, let's do that. Reference list, same as other places. This is the citation manager. You can link uh, journal articles and web websites to to the site and then site actions generally only used by um, uh, the heritage offices and site recorders but these have typical flags that can uh, summarize the, the the entire database for particular actions again don't really worry about that in your permit application